start. We got a good group in there. Well, uh, well welcome everyone. So today, um, thanks for joining us. I know you could be anywhere else, but you can't because the government says you can't. Um, we, we have uh, Katie Day from uh, Moving Me, Texas in Houston. We have Kenneth Err from Compass in Oakland. And we have Franco Silicon Valley in uh, Silicon Valley uh, joining us today. So the format we have today is just we're going to just go uh, one by one to talk about um, the different type of videos they do. They're going to go really in on the equipment they use, how they got started, what things cost, you know, and then we're moving for, for a more like um, newer uh, pop listing agent to someone that does a lot of uh, high unit production in Texas to Franco. Franco mostly does other videos um, with 30 something thousand followers, like promoting small businesses, uh, but he's also a real estate agent. Uh, so Kenneth, why don't you take, uh, start? All right. Hey, everyone. Um, thank you for joining us. So I'm kind of the, the, the newbie in the group here. Um, I do do videos, um, but mostly for listings and some neighborhoods um, and, you know, Instagram stories and things like that. So I'm going to talk about some of the basics about videos and then show you a little bit about what we do. Um, so let me present. you guys see this screen? Yep. Okay. Um, so I've been in coaching for like four years now. And my coach has told me for the last four years, do videos, do videos, do videos. I found every excuse in the book to not do videos. Um, and now, now that I've done a few, it certainly have, has gotten easier. Um, you know, we don't need as many takes. Um, just have gotten used to it. And uh, something that uh, I've come to learn is, Done is better than perfect. You don't, you don't need to have it perfect every single time. Um, so this is a little bit about me, uh, my, the, the different platforms I'm on. Your East Bay Home is my team page. Uh, I run a team of three agents uh, in Oakland and two admin. If you want to see pictures of my baby, follow my personal page. Um, and my YouTube, I don't have enough followers on there yet, so you have to search for me in our website. Um, so the different platform main ones are uh, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Um, 500 million people a day on Instagram, 4 billion video views a day on Facebook, and 150 billion views a month on YouTube. So these are the main platforms that we use. There's also like Twitter, TikTok, Snapchat, and stuff, but um, we don't really go down that road. Um, Instagram is what we use most. I think a lot of people use IG stories. Kenny's probably like the king of IG stories. Um, his whole life is on there. But, you know, 15 second clips, make it informal. It's great for like behind the scene tours. Um, things you just want to show like your followers about your day or whatnot. Your IG feed is where you can post an actual video. It's limited to one minute. So you kind of have to think about the content. IGTV, you can do up to 10 minutes. Um, and then you can also post like, uh, a, a short clip on your IG feed. And then once they're done, they can see the rest on IGTV. And then you can do IG live as well. So these are, these are our, um, like our, this is our Instagram um, profile page. And then like, this is one of the videos, 83 main lane, one of like our more successful ones. And then our IGTV page, which we're just starting to upload our old videos to because I just found out that Icon existed yesterday. Um, so with Facebook, uh, videos, you, you want to upload directly to Facebook because you'll get more views versus pasting like a YouTube or a Vimeo link. Um, that way you get higher quality. Um, so you don't get like that pixelated look and you can pin your videos to the top of the page. Like if you have an active list, listing or something like that. And then Facebook Live and Facebook Watch is just like IGTV Live. Um, oh shit, hold on. Um, so this, this is our Facebook page for our videos. Uh, we, we mostly do property videos. Um, we've done like a neighborhood tour and this year before like the, the shelter in place, um, we, we did film a bunch of content. We're planning on filming more. And so hopefully we'll release some um, Later, and I'll show you guys a couple of the videos that we've done. I focus mainly on like production value because I don't have time or know how to go and edit different videos. 
Um, like Franco does like an amazing job. Like, you know, his, his videos are just like kick ass. Um, so I'll definitely show you some of that later. Um, YouTube is cool too. Uh, I think it's like we po put our videos there and then we embed it into our website. So that's how we get views and like it's searchable. It's like one of, you know, I think it's the most popular video platform, I believe. Um, so like the views here aren't as good for us at least because we aren't very active. Um, most of the views that we get on our web page, uh, on our YouTube is based on traffic from our web page. So if you go to like the neighborhood page or our listings, we have videos embedded there and then people are looking at it that way. Um, so I think Katie will talk about this a little bit more. Um, I mean, you really can make videos with anything. Everyone has a cell phone and, you know, it has decent, decent or re actually really good quality on new newer phones. So you can do like selfie videos, um, especially for like uh, Instagram stories, like your cell phone is more than enough. If you want to get more high tech, you know, there's like, uh, I have a DJI Pocket Osmo that I use sometimes. I have like a mirrorless camera. Um, you want to think about like the microphones you use for audio quality. If, it's, if you're going to be doing something where you're talking, um, the, 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 the onboard microphone may not be the best one. Um, and also consider like consider getting a tripod or like a gimbal so that, um, you know, people don't feel like they're on a roller coaster while, um, watching your video. And then, um, we use a bunch of different apps to help us either post or edit videos. So like later helps us post, um, buffers just like later. Mojo is really cool. If you want to do like videos in your Instagram stories, you can make like pictures into a video where it just moves and has animation. Um, iMovie is perfectly fine if you're starting out editing your own videos. Um, it does the job. I use it. That's the only thing I know how to use. Um, Final Cut Pro is probably more advanced and I don't even have it. I don't know how to use it. Um, and one, one stat that I found really interesting is um, uh, on social media, 85% of the videos are watched without sound. And on mobile, 92% of videos are watched without sound. So one of the one of the tools that I would seriously consider, if you're doing like a walkthrough or something where you're talking, is um, getting captions put into your video so people can read and not have to rely on turning on audio because they're probably not going to do it anyways. Um, and as far as ideas for the types of videos, um, ours are mostly just listed. Um, you know, we can, we're, we're starting to do an about me video. We also do like before and afters. We did a neighborhood video in Temescal. Uh, I think Franco highlights like restaurants and businesses and like, uh, you know, the business owners like it because they get to, they get to show uh, their business off to people. We do a lot of behind the scenes stuff um, and educational. Uh, I think Katie just said like she filmed like a whole buyer and seller like segment um, that, you know, th that could live on forever. Um, so for us, like our videos mainly go back to advertising. So um, when we post it on social media, um, you can create different groups, um, so that you can advertise to them later. So we have a video, you can set all these fields up. So like someone to watch the video for 10 sec, uh, five, uh, three seconds or 50% 50, 50 or whatever it might be. And then later on when you have um, like a post or you have a, a, a just listed and you wanna really, really promote it, you can put that post in front of all the people that have viewed your video. So that's mainly what we focus on, um, we don't do a lot of videos. So the ones that we do, we, we boost or we advertise on Facebook and Instagram and try to get as many eyeballs on it as possible. And then when we have a, like a static picture or another video, we can automatically target those people again. So we get our, our views go up since we're not posting frequently. Um, so I'll show you guys a couple of like videos that we've done. This is for, um, this tree house, we call it the tree house in Oakland. Um, it's next to the Mormon temple. It's like it's one of the, I 
this is Ken R with our group at Compass. And so I always just do like a quick um, intro for myself in the beginning, just so that people can see my face. Um, and then the rest of the video is just like uh, the video off for going through the house. We always do a mix of drone and interior shots. And then um, this is another video we did for Temescal in Oakland. It's a neighborhood video. So again, I just do um, a quick intro. Uh, my videographer films it and uh, I just do some talking in the beginning so everyone sees my face and then I do a voiceover afterwards. Hey, Temescal. This is Ken Ur with the Earth Group at Compass. Let me take you around and show you what it has to offer. Once a small village that was part of the Sente Prop was 45,000 acre ranch. Oakland's Temescal neighborhood became part of the city of Oakland in 1987 and is one of Oakland's oldest. And so that's, that's basically what I have there. Um, and like, so, and what we've done is as we've gone on, um, we have all this extra content, um, so we can use it in other videos in the future. Cool. Well, thank you uh, for sharing that. Oh Anyone God. have any questions for Kenneth? I think someone said, uh, Elena said, when, when, we, when you say we do videos, who actually does it for you? So my property videos and uh, neighborhood videos are a uh, videographer. So my videographer works for a production company. So like one of the last um, things they did was a commercial for Toyota. And um, so he shoots for us on like weekends and evenings or even afternoons. What, what, what's... Um... What are some videos you've done and what's the pricing I've been? Do you charge, charge per hour, charge? Uh, uh, it's usually by project. So we, we tell him what we want to do. Um, he gets an idea of how much time it needs. So like a neighborhood video is like multiple days of shooting on site. So it'll be like a thousand something dollars. But a property video will maybe like 800 bucks. Um, for captions and, and apps. So if you upload your video to... Uh, Facebook and YouTube, it actually will create captions for you on a like few second basis. And you go in and just edit um, what your actual words are because uh, it doesn't catch it all the time. Wanna take it away, Katie? Cool, Katie, let's go. All right. Okay, let me get my screen going. Can you guys hear me? Yep, we hear you. Okay, and hear. you can see my screen? Yeah. Uh, All right. Fantastic. Cool. So how's it going? Uh, my name is Katie Day. I am based out of Houston, Texas. Thanks for everyone that is here today. Um, I'm excited to present and share some of, you know, our content and info and stuff. Um, Kenny asked for kind of real life examples, kind of what we do to produce content and video for social. So today I'm going to dig into kind of where we were at when we got started and then what we do today and kind of the progression there. So some context for me and my team, I got into real estate in 2017 full time. I started a team in 2018. We added a buyer's agent. Um, 2019 was focused more on process and systems and content. And this year we're focused on growth and adding team members. Um, again, I am based in Houston. I know um, my fellow panelists are in California. So if you are in another city or a state, um, shoot me a DM. Uh, we're always looking for referral partners throughout the country. So always have to plug that um, there. All right. So um, as far as content goes, just to give you an idea as to, to what we do, um, we're on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook. Um, for other video stuff, we also do uh, bomb bomb. So video tech um, or video emails and video texts, and then just plain video texts, like shooting from your phone. Um, and texting that to someone. Um, one thing that I wanted to point out before kind of getting started was defining your target audience. Um, so this isn't just your ideal customer, but also what you're looking to achieve from social media. So um, everything that we do on social is going to be intentional and there's a reason why we're doing it. Um, for me, as far as like my, my goal with social, we want to provide value for consumers. So when they look, um, you know, me or our team up, they see that we have real estate and market knowledge um, and that we you know, know what we're doing, right? Um, as far, I also want people to um, get to know me as a person and my personality. 
Um, in addition to that, I also want to connect with referral partners across the country to be their go-to person for Houston real estate. So we do things that are, you know, property and real estate related, but then also kind of real estate um, industry related as well. So that may or may not be something that you're trying to do, um, but it's important, again, to define your target audience. Um, I think one of the things is, you know, I'm sure everyone's heard this before, but you can't be for everyone. Um, I think the saying something like, um, you know, if you try to be all things to all people, then you won't be anything to anybody. Um, so it's really important, again, to define your target audience. Um, and then the content that you're putting out is directed toward those people. Um, there's going to be people out there that don't like it, and that's completely fine. Um, I think that that, you know, it'd be, it'd be great if everyone that contacts you based on, you know, what they're seeing about you online or the type of people that you want to work with and the, the type of people you get along with. Um, so that's why, you know, we do put in some other lifestyle stuff and personal things in there as well, um, you know, on our Instagram and on our social. Um, but that's a way bigger topic that I, um, you know, could dig into way deeper. So I will dig into the topic for the day. So um, what I'm going to focus on today is kind of starting out versus scaling up. So focus tools, uh, things that you need to get started, apps, so apps and software to, you know, continue to, to raise the bar of your videos, and then content, so ideas for, for leveraging, you know, your personal brand and, and things that you um, can do there. So as far as tools to start out, a um, couple of things to just kind of raise the bar from just shooting with just your phone would be a selfie light, a lav mic, and a tripod. Um, as far as a selfie light goes, um, I've got or now it just is going to make the picture more clear if you're shooting a property tour or something and it's not the greatest lighting it's going to give you better lighting pretty pretty straightforward there um, a lav mic is the mic that you clip on to your shirt um, and we use those um, connected to our phone um, and it just in, improves the quality of sound which is always good um, most people don't listen to um, videos with sound um, as kind of said but when they should be good. If, if you know you turn on the sound and it's all garbled, they probably won't listen. And then tripods, um, again, pretty self-explanatory. Um, you know, it, it's going to raise the, the level of which your phone is at. Um, so we've all been on Zoom calls, I'm sure, over the past week where the person's like, you know, you're seeing their chin and all that. So when you use a tripod, it's going to, you know, help people to be able to see um, where, just see you better. Um, so I've linked some of the ones that I use here. Um, that's the selfie light that's sitting on my computer right now and the, the mic that's on my, my table right now as well. Um, as far as tools to scale up, um, I think the biggest thing that I'd like to point out before going into this is to do your research on anything that you're going to spend more than 50 bucks on. Um, these are things that we've started to spend money on and, and things that we, we have. Um, but I can tell you that I have an entire drawer of stuff upstairs in my house of just like camera stuff that I don't use or that I purchased used one and like didn't want to figure out how to use it. So do your research if you're gonna spend more than $50 on anything um, and then actually commit to learning how to use it and optimizing it. Um, if you're gonna not shoot videos that frequently, it may make sense to just use your phone and then pay a videographer, as Kenneth was saying. Um, so really have that honest conversation with yourself before you run out and buy a camera and all of these things. Um, so as far as things that we like, um, I like the idea of the wireless mics and I have this uh, one. So instead of having a mic um, that is on your shirt or on your collar, you can tuck it other, you know, in other places and you don't have it out. Um, and Rode is, is pretty high quality. Um, if you're doing property videos, kind of said as well, stabilizers are very important. I have the uh, DJI Osmo mobile. Um, and I also have the Osmo pocket that he mentioned as well. Um, this one's another good one that's well rated. I've never used it, but I know they're both, um, you know, pretty popular. And then as far as scaling up, this is where things start to get pricey. So cameras and lenses, um, you know, I think that camera there that's pictured is like two grand, um, you know, and lenses are hundreds of dollars each. So again, um, do your research, make sure you're actually going to use it. Light kits, um, green screens, things like that. And then drones, again, these are all things that are going to make your videos look great. Um, as, as Kenneth was saying, you know, in almost all of their property videos, they toss in drone footage. Um, not only is it helpful for, you know, understanding a neighborhood, area it also makes your videos look really good um, so but they're expensive right so if you're not going to fly a drone and you're just selling homes fo focus on finding a videographer you know that can do that for you 
All right, so moving on to apps, as far as starting out, a couple apps that are really helpful, um, Canva for design tools. So for thumbnails, logos, channel art, um, Instagram stories, presentations, flyers. I mean, you can literally make anything. We make actual postcards through Canva. Um, we print flyers through Canva sometimes. You can really do anything on there. One thing that I really like about Canva, or two things actually, one is that um, you can design something on your computer and then, and then also have the app on your phone. So it's interchangeable there. And then the other thing is, is if you're on a team or you lead a team and you create something in there, you can share that with your team and then they can change it with like their contact info and stuff like that. So it's really helpful um, to be able to create, you know, um, cohesive content across, you know, your, your office or your team or something like that. Um, other things as far as apps to start out, going live. Um, going live is um, super easy, especially right now because everyone's home. You've got a um, super engaged and captive audience right now. Um, so it's, you know, very easy to go live um, and then you don't have to edit it, right? So not only are you a lot of eyes on a video very soon, you don't have to edit it, super easy. And then um, finally, iMovie. Um, iMovie is probably one of the easiest um, editing softwares out there that's a little bit higher level. So you can do a little bit more stuff in it than just like, I don't even know what else you could do on your phone, but uh, it's super easy on your phone. You can just click all the videos you want, add some text, add some music, and then you've got a video. Um, you can also interchange. So if you, you know, are using it on your phone, you can push it to your iPad computer and do more stuff there. So those are all really cool. Um, as far as scaling up, a couple of things that we use, um, a teleprompter for when we're doing um, any sort of like um, scripted videos or any videos where, you know, market updates, stuff where there's a lot of stats or numbers that we're not going to remember or we don't want to read off a piece of paper off screen. Um, so it's super easy to use on your phone. Uh, for captions, I really like that Facebook and, and um, YouTube can both pre-caption your videos. But as Kenneth said, you have to go through and make sure that they're accurate because their accuracy is probably like 85% accurate. Um, and I tend to talk pretty quickly. So um, it really screws up my captions, just if I'm gonna be completely honest. So I use Rev, you do have to pay for that. So you can either upload the video file or you can, if it's on YouTube, link that, that video file and you will receive your captions back within 24 hours or less. So that's still there. Um, and then as far as editing software, um, both Adobe Premiere Pro and Final Cut Pro cost money. I use Premiere Pro um, and that was, I had experience with like Photoshop and Illustrator in the past. So both of them take a little bit of time to learn and they cost money. So if you're not going to actually put the time into doing it, use iMovie or use something, you know, on your phone. Um, and then if you have the time to sit through some, you know, classes or tutorials, then do, you know, Premiere Pro or Final Cut Pro. Um, but that's kind of scaling up as far as, you know, quality on videos. Um, and then finally, content ideas. So I, you know, if you're already doing a lot of video, you may have already thought of all of these things or are doing all of these things. Um, but like, I generally will categorize content into two different categories um, or a few, but basically everything's going to rank differently on different sites. So like what people will sit and watch on YouTube isn't what someone's going to watch on Facebook or on Instagram or whatever. Um, so don't get too caught up on like view count. Um, for things like YouTube, it is important to keep things as cohesive as possible. Um, but that's just a whole nother topic that I won't go into today. So, um, but basically end of story, don't get too caught up on view count. Um, you always want to have and produce evergreen content. So evergreen content is content that's timeless and can be relevant and possible educational. Um, so that would be like the buyer and seller guides. Um, that would be actual neighborhoods or areas of town, like the um, first video that kind of showed. Um, and then the other category of content would be stuff that is timely and relevant now. So for a, for that, it could be a weekly or monthly show. Um, for those, I would recommend doing some stuff that's non-real estate related. So like, you know, neighborhood spotlights or things that like you, things that are interest you and you can be super excited to talk you know, so that people can feel your excitement and want to listen to it. Um, so like food, restaurants, sports, cooking, golf, um, things like that. If it's non-real estate related, that's, or if it's real estate related 
stuff that's cool too. Um, so think like home tips, like a weekly home tip or technology tips, things like that. Um, property tours, pretty self-explanatory. Um, that's great for Facebook Live and Instagram Live, just as far as content goes. Um, but as far as raising the bar on that, um, you know, you can get a gimbal and do stuff yourself. Or, you know, there are so many videographers that are out there that can do this really well. So it's something that, you know, you can go super high production quality and spend, you know, 800 or a thousand bucks. Um, like Kenneth was saying, or, you know, you can find a lot of people out there that may not be, you know, a thousand percent uh, production quality, but may do it a little bit less or a little bit cheaper and, you know, just kind of continue to find videographers to help you out there. Um, outside of that, lifestyle videos or spotlight videos, um, these always get a lot of views because you're basically cross promoting with another brand. Um, if something's hot and new, chances are people want to watch it. So you'll get a lot of views on that. People will be searching it. Um, and then long-term, it provides you with evergreen content. Um, and then finally, vlog style content. Um, you know, a lot of what we do is pretty boring, but some of what we do is interesting. Um, so, I mean, there's a, a thousands of things you can do here. So like navigating a tough transaction, uh, day in the life, you know, whatever type content, behind the scenes stuff people like. Um, so that's really all that I had. As far as takeaways, I think the three things that I had, had written down are consistency. So you need to post every single day. Um, you need to, um, sorry. Hmm. Kenny, is it fixed now or no? It's good now. Earlier slides like chopped in half and duplicated. I'm not sure what it was. The entire time or just now? A uh, couple of slides. I could, hear you. I could hear you fine the okay. whole time. All right. Anyways, um, so main takeaways, consistency. You have to post every day and across all platforms. Um, as Kenneth said too, it needs to be native content. So you need to post the actual videos on Facebook and on YouTube. Don't take the YouTuber Vimeo link and put it on Facebook. Post the actual video. Um, be authentic. Um, you know, if you mess up and it's not perfect, put it out anyways. Um, you, you know, there's a lot of people out there that aren't doing any video today. So having some video that may not be a hundred percent, you know, 98% is fine. Um, and it shows you're human. So that's not a terrible thing. Um, and then make a plan. So create a plan that is scalable, um, and a framework for your content. So if that's starting out with one weekly video and doing that once a week for a month, and then next month layering in a second video and doing two a week for a month, um, you know, plan out the next two to three months of content, especially now while you have the time, um, and then find someone that to hold you accountable to do that. Um, you're far more likely to do that as opposed to, you know, saying I'm going to shoot a video a day for the next 30 days. Um, and yeah, that probably won't happen. Um, so yeah, that's all that I've got. I appreciate you guys letting me ramble for 10 to, I don't know, 15 minutes here. Um, question shoot me a dm um love to connect on instagram is probably the easiest way the app i'm on the most um and then let's see i'll collect all the slides from all the um panels and um there's gonna be a follow-up email that gets sent out tomorrow so we'll just include all three uh three links in there for you guys yeah um let's see as far as questions i don't know where do you get that uh, follow at where did I get what? That custom polo at. Queensboro. As you can see, I wear them frequently from both my slides and <laughs> me today. I have lots of the same colors of the same ones. I don't wear the same ones every day, but yeah. That's probably a good tip too. Like I see, um, I see a lot of like Kyle Whistle, he does a lot of Facebook Live. He always has a hat on. And like some, yeah. in my office always has, like Wilson Lung at um, Side Real Estate has Wilson Lung Associates. So it's good to get that branding in your, kind of like a hardcore uh, watermark you know, on you for your videos. Yeah. Um, I think one question that I had that I think was useful too is like, how do you come up with the, the content that you create and, and schedule it out? I, I think you were about to go over that with me and then we had to get on, but I think that's important too. Cause I love how you do that. Yeah. So um, pre COVID we had a very um, detailed content schedule that, um, you know, kind of got interrupted. So, 
um, kind of our plan for the year was every single Wednesday and Friday to put out a neighborhood spotlight video. So Wednesdays would be businesses, both restaurants and other local businesses. And then Fridays would be, you know, food, foodie Friday uh, restaurants. Um, so we have a videographer. So the plan was, is, you know, to shoot basically eight videos a month with him that did that. Um, and then outside of that, um, property tours would go out on um, Mondays and Thursdays, depending um, on the week. Um, and just trying to layer in other content. So I think we, our goal was to do team stuff every Tuesday. So things that if you're part of a team or just want to start a team, like what that would look like. Um, and then just posting other things like market updates and stuff on Wednesdays and, um, you know, other days, but like the Wednesday, Fridays was the neighborhood spotlight stuff. Um, and then property tours and other stuff sprinkled in. So I, I, my, my friends over at YouTube agent, um, they have like a couple thousand uh, subscribers. They're getting a ton of business from it. I'm actually going to be hiring them to my, my channel because I, I'm not into, I don't have time to cut and edit. Um, but this is cool. This is a uh, cool tool that they shared with me. Let's see. Called TubeBuddy. So on, yeah. on TubeBuddy.com, you can go to kind of like do a backwards search on what's uh, being um, searched. And then you could create videos based on those search so that you can create, uh, come up with topics and ideas. Uh, so it could be like, so right now I, I have, I have a YouTube channel, but I just launched, but it's right now just all market update videos, uh, recorded webinars and training, uh, called living in the Bay area, but I'm going to be trying to do more like, um, neighbor stuff that for the San Francisco Bay area and San Jose, uh, but then this will be able to teach, tell me what I need to create. I would think that you should separate out your agent stuff and your real estate stuff to two channels. You think so? Like the, the so I was thinking like maybe keeping all my uh, like agent training, like you know tricks and all on separate channel than my been, um, then then all the Oakland stuff and like Bay stuff would be yeah. like I would say. But I mean I don't my YouTube's not great and it's all on one channel. So cool. Well, th uh, thank you for your time. Any last questions before we move on to Franco? Queensboro. What's Queensboro? The shirt, the polo place. Uh, is that spelled correctly? Queensboro? Yeah, actually, yeah. Cool. Okay, uh, Franco, you're up. Cool, awesome guys. Let me share this uh, screen. Do you guys see my screen? No, I'm sharing the wrong screen. <laughs> Yeah. Let me fix this. Share. Why is that not working? Uh, let's see. Bear with us. So this is uh, Ken's, Katie, yeah. and Franco first time ever presenting. <laughs> I think they did a pretty good Who job. Do you guys right? see right now? Do you guys see the vi the video screen or no? Yeah, with like a living room. Oh yeah. Oh, okay. So I guess that is working. Looks different on my end. Cool. So what's up guys? My name is Franco. I'm over here in the, let's see, San Jose, Santa Clara County area. I do video work and I have a show that we do out here where we kind of talk, we try to feature a lot of restaurants, businesses, and uh, basically a lot of things to do in this area. So I'm gonna let this play a little bit just so you can kind of see some of the stuff that we do. So I'm going to try to talk a lot about production. Um, I know it's not everything, but let's see here. So one of the things is why video? Because exposure is a huge thing. So um, as a real estate agent, you kind of want to have that presence and build rapport and stay connected. Um, when I have this, it ties in with my real estate clients because you have your past clients and they're like, man, yo, I saw that video of, like the Hotel Marriott or whatever it is. And, and I really loved it. And then they, they basically reach out to me and stay connected that way. So let's see here. Basically, I love how Katie does it where you're kind of bringing value. You're, you're, you're getting people to be excited about uh, going out to a restaurant like this or Santana Row and, and try to Man, I don't know why I'm so nervous. Sorry, guys. <laughs> so anyways, so one of the things is on Facebook and Instagram, 
you really want to try to bring inter interesting content. So they actually rate you on um, when people are scrolling Instagram, they go through and see if people are actually stopping on your content. So are they stopping and are they watching your stuff? And then that's what they're going to put on the top of the Instagram page. So you kind of have, have to put a mix of real estate content and, and other content that people are interested in. So like restaurants, events, and stuff like that um, will really mix it up. So let's see here. So when you go to marketing, um, you want to try to stand out as a real estate agent. So signal to noise, doing things different. So try to have personality, try to be funny and find out how you are different. So as people are scrolling, they're scrolling pretty quickly on these uh, on Instagram and Facebook. So you really want to capture their attention within the first two to three seconds. Let's see. Well, if we uh, don't have a personality, <laughs> then, uh, then yeah, it's going to be tough. It's kind of the same as when you're, when you're working with people. So um, if you look at Katie's videos, you see her video and then I don't know if you guys follow Stephen Kim. I'm a huge fan of his stuff, but you watch his video. He has a blog and basically I've never met the guy. I've never talked to the guy, but you watch his stuff. You're like, man, this guy's so joyful, so happy. And you get that personally personality out there. So I think that's important for some of us. I mean, there's no right or wrong when you're doing this kind of stuff. So um, the truth of it is, is like, as you're making these videos as an artist, you're kind of like a painter. So how you, how you create the video is, uh, is it's an art, right? So I don't want us to get too caught up on the equipment that we use. We can spend, what I always say is you can spend a thousand bucks on a paintbrush but it's not gonna make you a better painter, right? So that's a huge thing. But the more we learn about video, the more we can kind of understand how we wanna do things. So one thing is know the difference between A-roll and B-roll. So A-roll is the content like where Katie has, where she's talking about real estate and, and that's where the audio is coming from. And then B-roll is kind of like the shots you're seeing right now, where it allows you to kind of get the, set the scene of what's going on in the background, you know, whether it's a car, um, it's an event, and get people emotionally involved with the content. So on all of these clips, I use movement. Movement is huge. So motion creates emotion. So there's, if you have a static shot, it kind of seems boring, but the slow, smooth movements uh, is what really adds, I feel, the emotion to the, to the scene. And, Katie kind of mentioned it, but there is, there's ways that you can make your, your clips a lot more smooth, like a, like a Ronin. One of the gimbals that I use is a Ronin S. It's a DJI. I'm a big fan of DJI because they're good with their, uh, it's a really easy learning curve. So they have these mobile things and then they have the big one for the DSLR like this, Oops. like this. So you can film these things really smooth. So also, when you're shooting, you kind of want to be aware of your depth of field. So on these shots, you got to know what's a foreground and what's a background. So um, separating the object from the background, you want a, a big aperture. And you can research kind of how to understand lighting. So there's aperture, there's shutter speed, and then there's ISO. And these are the three you kind of want to balance when shooting and when you're shooting these clips. So Let's see here. You also want to understand different frame rates and speeds. So slow motion, fast motion. I do a mix of fast motion and, and slow motion because it, it kind of gets you to that dreamy vibe in these videos. If you can see the fire, this bartender, um, it looks better when it's all in slow motion. Let's see here. So when it comes to the tech stuff that I shoot with personally, I, I use the Sony a7 III, and then I mix between two lenses. It's a, it's a 16 to 35 and a 24 to 7. As an agent, you probably want to start with a 16 to 35. This body is about 2,000 uh, for a DSLR, and the lens is about 2,000. But like they said, uh, you can do everything with the iPhone. I actually shot a whole wedding 
my friend wasn't having a videographer and uh, I thought I'd challenge myself and we did a whole wedding off of the iPhone and you could probably see my video on that later, but it's, it ended up being a really good video and you can't even tell it was all, all filmed. My friend, uh, Kat Ma, uh, DM me the other day when she saw me tag you. It was like, oh, I know Franco. She, he shot, she shot a wedding on an iPhone. Oh, like, yeah. I, yeah. I know about that. So you're, I'm glad you're bringing it up. We'd love to take a look at that later. Oh, yeah, definitely. So one, you know, I love challenges. For me, that was a cool little challenge. You know, I, you know I'm not getting charged for it. I'm like, hey, we got, an, we got two iPhones. It's just me and my assistant. And we ended up filming it and doing the same day same day edit and and we posted it that dinner uh it ended up being awesome so let's see here i'm uh i'm gonna go over kind of what a production looks like when we're going to a restaurant okay so first thing we plan our day i really only do video work about at most one day out of the week uh so the rest would be real estate stuff and then we'll dedicate one day to doing video stuff. So we plan out, we schedule, we typically shoot like four restaurants, five restaurants in one day. We clump them up so we're a little more productive. And basically the first thing we do is uh, we talk with the business owner, we let them know kind of the shots we want, the foods that we want, what food looks the, what food basically looks the sexiest and what would look nice on camera, right? So um, we have them kind of prep that and we let them know that we're only going to be in and out of there between 30 to 40 minutes. So um, for each one, and then basically that way they're prepped. They're like, okay, he's going to be here. Uh, this is what we want to do. Make sure everything looks nice, all this. So they're prepped mentally. Also me and uh, my assistant Tao, uh, we're prepped on the things that we want to shoot. We have a little bit of a shot list um, and we try to get more and more organized with that. But basically, as we're going to the restaurant, we open their Yelp. We kind of look, we go to a lot of these restaurants blind. We've never been in it. We look at their Yelp. We look at what looks nice, whether they have, they have pretty wall, pretty kitchen, pretty seating. And, and we go off of, uh, uh, we basically look at, okay, we're going we're gonna to want to shoot that really cool net uh, string thing and then make it look nice. So uh, we go in and out of there. As soon as we get there, we just set up our stuff. We set up our cameras. We introduce ourselves. and we get a ton of B-roll. So uh, basically all we have is two cameras uh, and we shoot for 10 minutes them cooking. And then we, we kind of, um, we have them act it out. So being a server, putting the food down, and sometimes we'll have a model with us as well. Uh, and then basically we'll collaborate and kind of come up with a different storyline. But realistically we get in there, we get two cameras of 30 minutes of footage, it's plenty of footage, just an hour of footage, and we condense it down to one minute. So after the end of our day, we organize all our footage, um, two cameras and the dates, the audio. We use the same lavalier mic that Katie showed. It's a $14 lavalier mic, nothing fancy. Um, and then as far as editing, that's a whole nother thing, but basically you can use any software. They're all pretty much the same. Uh, Adobe Premiere, Final Cut, iMovie. But what we do is for every, for both cameras, we look at all the footage, the 30 minutes, the 40 minutes of footage, you highlight it and you know what your B-roll is going to be. So you highlight those clips and then you want to try to tell a story within these videos. So in these sequences you're watching, uh, this is Melanie right here, uh, but basically you want them, you want to be able to start small with the really tight details like this. It's a close up of her in the face and this, this light structure, whatever it is. And then we get into the upbeat music, make it more interesting and, and then pretty much finish it off. So yeah. And then when we come to posting, one of the things I learned is that these platforms are very uh, follower based. So you're really only posting like on Instagram, the only people that get to see it are your followers. So what we do is we do raffles for these, um, for these businesses and it allows your followers to be able to tag shot of your, uh, of your, the tech, the copy you use for Instagram. Yeah, I can also send that. So what, so I just posted one today about an hour ago. Tao basically we use the same script every time. 
Um, basically, Tacolicious, um, Tacolicious, and Salt, Salt and Straw have a giveaway. We're doing two winners. Um, two winners. Basically, it says uh, tag. Uh, tag a friend for per entry. Uh, I'm gonna share the screen, screen so they can see uh, what it cool. is that uh, you know what it looks like. Uh, let me pick the right screen. Here we go. So this is some of that uh, Franco does. Let me pick a uh, older one that's popular. Like you see these have, these have like you know thirty thousand likes. Uh, you know three x wine bottle giveaway. We're giving away bottles. You're using it on all of them, right? Yeah. So it's the same thing. All we do is change the business name. We try to keep everything systematically because we feel that the more, the easier we make it, the more likely we're going to do it and actually post it. Uh, so we keep everything the same. The way we shoot um, is the same. The way we enter a restaurant and get out of the restaurant is all the same stuff. So the same with real estate stuff too. You know, you want to create a system that works for you and actually gets it done and have it repeatable. So, uh, Hopefully I brought value to you guys. Sorry if I was nervous in the beginning, but <laughs> anyways, when Kenny's watching me, I get really nervous. So. Just, just pretend you're on your own camera. <laughs> <laughs> but um, excited, I, I feel like there's gonna be a lot of questions. Uh, so more than happy to, you can always reach out to me on Instagram as well if you have questions. Let's see. So, so, so I'm looking at your page right now. Like, how how much real real estate content do you have on there? What's your, do you have a certain ratio that you go by? Good point. Because actually, I'd say most of my on my timeline is just all business features. Um, it's all business features, and I only do real estate stuff on my stories. I'm a big fan of, um, and there's no right or wrong on how to do things. But for me, I don't like to. Uh, I believe in like give, give, and then, and then ask kind of like, that's what part why I like Katie's stuff and Steven's stuff is that they give more value than they ever ask. They're not always like sold, sold listing, you know, contact me if you have someone you, you'd like to refer where they actually give value and stuff like that. So for me, I look at it a little differently. I'm not saying it's the right way, but I like to just give, 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 and then they see my real estate stuff later. They'll be like, yo, I saw that video you made are you still doing real estate and then you know it'll be a connection from there and it, that this also gets every video i make also goes to my crm so new video check it out and then you know i often have these guys contacting me sick stuff dude i, I want to try it or stuff like that you know so how long so I'm, I'm going to your feed right now it looks like you maybe maybe start doing these videos less than two years ago exactly yep yeah so so it didn't take that long um, I think, I guess also before I started, I really strategized on what I wanted to feature, right? So uh, the question was in the South Bay, I was kind of talking to you about it, but like people always go to San Francisco or Oakland to do fun stuff. And then people are always asking me like, you know, what is there to do in San Jose or South Bay? And, and I noticed that nobody's really featuring stuff out here. People are always asking what there is to do out here. And uh, my focus with this video is to kind of excite people to go out and do things and find different things to do in this area. So it wasn't, it was never really a real estate based thing for me to do it. I genuinely love making video and love doing videos. So it's kind of how it came about, but always loved doing video since I was a kid. Thank you, Melody. She says my videos are fire. So how long are your videos? All my videos are typically 60 seconds or less. So I also realized early on that attention spans are getting shorter and shorter. Um, so people, when there's so much content out there, people are swiping so fast, they don't, they want to move on to the next thing. So also on that topic is when you have a video, you capture their attention in the first two to three seconds. So, so what we're doing now um, and we're adjusting now is like on the Talk Alicious video, in the first two seconds, there's three or four different flashes. It's like a taco bartender, something. And then I go into my same script. It's just like, what's up guys? This is Franco Silicon Valley. And right now we're going into whatever. And, but once you caught their attention in the first two, two to three seconds, then they stop on your content and then they want to continue watching and kind of like, I'm interested in what this bar is, you know, and then they'll go from there. 
just I just I was watching a Facebook live this morning with um, someone was talking about Sharon uh, Shrivasa. He's the CEO of Kingston Lane. He's he was the one that built I think uh, Telsa Real Estate over in SoCal. So the way he does it, the first two seconds of all his videos, he, he throws his fingers at you. So if you see that in the preview, you just have to like pause right there, check it out. So I think if you guys can figure out something that just catches someone, stops them in the tracks, you can get more traction on your videos. Yeah. So how long does it take to make a 60 second video? Um, realistically, it does take a lot of time. The editing takes a lot of time and we're working to make that more uh, productive. But on average, if I were to do it myself, I'd say about four hours or so for one one minute video. It does take a lot of time. now. With Tao learning how to do all these things, she's starting to do all the favoriting, prepping it, and then I do the finish work. So now she does about 80% of that work, and then I do all the finishing work. Um, so I typically spend, she spends about two hours, I spend about two hours, and we're working to get it to be better than that. So if you do it longer than a minute, doesn't IGTV help boost your page? Yes, it does. IGTV um does help you get more on top when that happens um that would also help your organic reach so do you ever travel to the east bay yes yes i do um anything i missed on these questions you, so, so you said real estate you were you were what company were you at right before you joined this company i actually it's interesting but i focus on mobile homes so um, I, I worked with Advantage Homes, a company that does that uh, over here. And now I'm with Keller Williams and we're building that here. So where we focus on mobile homes and make it a transition movement because there's an affordability issue here. So it's kind of a step up for people to get out of 3000 a month renting, own this, get some equity, and then get into a uh, single family because it's hard for people to get from 3000 a month to $1.2 million for real estate. But so if you, if you, I mean, so you're, 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 you're moving into more, more sales. If you, once you get really busy, do you see yourself outsourcing or creating a production company to do more of your editing? And do you, do you see yourself offering the service, uh, service uh, for other agents? I actually do. Um, for other agents, that's something I've been dabbling with. I, I think I want to get my production to where it makes sense as well. Um, obviously, you know, we're real estate agents. We make good money on the real estate side and the video side, the time for the money doesn't make sense. So I do wanna start finding video editing partners to just be able to handle the editing side because that takes a lot of time. And once I get that flowing, I definitely wanna get more people involved in getting that edited, getting it done for them and stuff like that, so yeah. Awesome, um, any more questions from the audience? We're approaching the hour mark, so we're ready to wrap it up. Um, just, just drop a line and we have all of our Instagram handles, I think. Let me see. Yeah, here. So you care to uh, follow any of us. And you guys have any other questions, comments for each other? I like Katie's stuff. And I like your stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, two, so two things. One, I feel like IGTV lately hasn't been as good as short videos on Instagram like I posted a few just short videos of me talking um, like less than 60 second videos and those got like 600 plus views and like IGTV really hasn't been ranking as well um, so I think it's just like people are home and have very short attention spans um, and also um, I know Stephen Kim um, and he actually is that nice so um, yeah so that's totally true and there's something I wanted to say too is that you know, as a real estate agent, you know, we can do all the branding we want, but like our real brand is our face, our personality and who we are, right? So when you're able to put that on video and people are watching your stuff and you're not having to go out on a phone call, go out to appointments, meet people, it's pretty powerful. And, you know, when you get, as soon as, you know, it's just a more efficient way to get yourself out there and get and help more people, right? So... And people yeah. feel like they already know you. They watch your videos all the time. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So. Cool. Well, um, well, thank you everyone for joining today. Uh, we're going to, uh, again, send this link out tomorrow. And if you're interested in more events, we're going to drop a link into the same email. And if you're interested in speaking, 
I, I think we're probably going to get locked up. What do you guys think about shelter in place? So, like, do you think it'll be lifted by May 1st? No? My team doesn't think either. I was like, shit, I, I'm going to be stuck here until June. So, I'm putting on two or three webinars a day because I have nothing better to do. If you guys want to join, uh, join in on this, uh, just let me know. Anyways, uh, cool. Well, thank you, everyone. Uh, have a good day. Stay healthy. Right, stay home. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Kenny. Thanks, Kenny. All right, guys. Thank you.